Okay, one of the next projects that I want to work on is a flip top table for my planer as well as another one of the uh, sanders that I have. So that's about how high I want it. Uh, so the, the if I can get it to be 34 and 7 8 inch high to the top of the deck of the planer, that means that I will be able to use the same table uh, as an outfeed table for the table saw as and bandsaw and such with the the same height when it's set for tail saw for the planer. Um, not that I plan to do any really long boards, but that might be a nice thing to have the option for. Um, so in order to get that height, given the height of the wheels that I got, which were these from Home Depot, uh, these are the ones that lock, when it's locked, it locks the rotation uh, of the bearing as well as the spin of the wheel. So that should hold it nice and solid. In order to do that, I came up with this frame size. Um, so we'll see how that works. So far I have the two sides built and the top built and yeah we'll see how that works. So 26 inches is supposed to be the gap between the sides and this is 26 inches wide so that plus a washer which Somewhere that plus these should give us spacing to work correctly. Oh, and the outfit table came out really nice. Uh, I ended up filling in all the holes with wood putty and then putting polyurethane on so it slides really nice and works great as a uh, assembly table because everything else that I have around here is covered in stuff. Uh, so this is not set up how it's going to be, let's see, I think I see lots of mess around it, but, um, so I have the two sides done, and the top, and unlike some of the other ones, I'm just going to use a half inch rod, that worked great in Mike's flip top table where we did sanders and things, so I just put this in my drill press with my cross slide vise, found the center for both ends, found the center of the 2x4, and drilled because I have a 12 inch um, drill press and it's a bench top drill press because I have one of those and a uh, overly large I think it's a six inch cross slide vise uh, I actually have to drill part way because the, the the total travel distance is too short to go this length uh, in one pass um, so I have to drill part way with the table at the complete bottom level of the drill press travel and then raise it up and then drill the rest of the way but luckily with the cross slide vise I'm able to get it recentered exactly on the hole and so it just it makes a really nice hole and that let me put one the whole way across and it's just let's see can I get it it worked the other day nope it's just too it's too stiff to oh there we go so it's stiff enough that I can barely turn it with one hand in this, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't have to spin in this, it just has to spin whenever I finally make holes in the sides. So this is about, let's see if I can get it here, uh, this is not quite right, but so it's going to spin let's see, about there. And so once I finally get the sides and stuff sorted out, I will drill a hole through here on both sides, on these sides, have this come through, and then probably put an oak block on the outside like we did for Mike's, uh, and then wax a bunch with paste wax uh, in the hole in the sides, and then it'll rotate in there, and that should be just fine. Um, this isn't going to have a ton of weight, unlike some of the other ones such as this <laughs> the big giant table uh, for flip tops um, this isn't going to have a ton of weight so the bearing surface of wood uh, of the rod on wood should be just fine 
Uh, this one definitely is heavy enough it needed bearings, uh, but that one works fine too. So, just a different method of doing it. Um, but I wanted to get just a little bit of video of this before I got too far, because then otherwise it's all sorted. And there's no internal videos. So, I have pocket screws to hold the sides together. Um, and pocket screws to hold this in place. And I know I've said it for other projects, but I really like my uh, miter saw. That makes these cuts so much nicer. And I can actually make square stuff with that. Uh, it's really frustrating when you have projects and you can't get nice square cuts because then the, the joints don't fit and then it takes forever. This actually was not too bad to get uh, it square uh, just by trimming slightly and measuring and yeah that's awesome so that should work so this is the first bit uh, again once I get a little further I'll take some more video of it but that is the next project so we'll go from there uh, back with more after I get more progress alright so it may be hard to zoom out for but uh, I got more progress done the sides are in place uh, I have bottom pieces uh, pocket screwed in. We'll see how that ends up working. The one problem I've realized with this is, and why I had to use a 2x6 here instead of a 2x4 like over there is I did not plan well for where <laughs> where these screws were for the half lap. Um, and it turns out right there is where <laughs> the default goes for a 2x4. So on that side, I don't know if it was on, yeah. I had to go in from this way because this one hit a screw. So that's also going to be the, a problem when I put the wheels on, I think, because again, the spacing for those screws are the exact same as it is for the default pocket screw. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I just may have to sh twist around the wheels but it works uh, it's 26 and 3 8 inches between the sides top bottom back front we have a nice consistent gap the whole way down it's tight because it, I don't have enough gap space in here so everything is frictioning that's not a bad thing but just everything is frictioning um, and what I did was for these sides I have a piece of hardwood that I kept from um, an old shipping crate I think from something but uh, I just drew drilled a half inch hole in and then currently I have vice grips eventually I'm going to well probably later today drill and put a cotter key pin type thing the wrap up around so yeah it's working good um, but yeah we got we got nice gaps down kind of see that uh, so overall since this is 26 inches wide and to here is 26 and 3 8 that I think means we have a 3 6 effectively a 3 16 gap on each side, uh, which isn't too bad. Um, and then uh, uh, I'm also going to get the normal thing that I do is get those, I think it's five, five sixteenths steel rods, drill in, uh, and put pins on front and back on both sides. Um, and I, basically, basically, I'm just using all the materials that I had here, hence why I had a three-quarter inch piece of plywood and a half inch piece of plywood otherwise I would have used two three-quarters but I didn't have two three-quarters that were long enough because uh, it has to be 24 inches wide and 26 inches long and unfortunately a lot of the found or I should say free wood that I got from Steve had been cut down to 23 inches instead of 24 uh, but that's the way it goes so We'll see how it goes. It works. I was able to get the wheels on. 
Uh, what I did was I used the same kind of pins, uh, the 5 16 pins. I got the half inch piece or the half inch rod uh, drilled with the cotter key or pin or I think that's a cotter pin uh, not the key uh, and then a piece of hardwood and that all works the wheel locks work great um, what I did was I attached the well I took this plywood off and drilled and attached the planer with bolts down through and then I took this other piece of plywood drilled and attached uh, that was with three and a half inch quarter quarter twenty bolts uh, this was using five sixteenths inch inch and a half or two inch bolts uh, two of those so I took this plywood off uh, attached the sander to the plywood then reattached the plywood to the unit so the way this works unlike some of the or I like my first flip top where the bolts go the whole way through the board the bolts terminate inside the the open area uh, behind the plywood so in order to take the planer off I actually have to take the sander board off uh, unscrew it and remove completely and then I can get to the bottom of the bolts for the planer um, yeah it works so I don't know if I'll be able to let's try an action shot if I if it'll work the tape is about out so we'll see if I get this to work I already took three pins out Flip it up around, pin goes back in. So then you just put the other pins in, and we're good. So yeah, uh, success.